Hello and welcome to another episode of the In Between Podcast. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. Hello and welcome to another episode of the In Between Podcast with your host as always, Kyle McLemore. Thank you so much for tuning in. Oh, it's been a while. It's been a minute. And I think there's something different, something slightly different from our last episode. That's right. It's no longer the long hair pod. It's the slightly shaggy hair pod, the little bit long pod, but not nearly as long as it was pod. That's right, hair has been cut, hair has been sliced. If you're only listening, then you're missing out on half the fun here. Half the fun is seeing, seeing is believing, of course, and if you can believe it, it's gone. That's right, the hair's gone. It's been about four long years since I've been growing it, give or take, since the start of COVID, give or take, uh, more or less, four years or so. Because I remember COVID starting, uh, give or take, I don't know, around like uh, the spring, the spring of 2020. And so the winter of 2019, I remember it was just starting to get like a little bit shaggy. And I thought to myself, well, you know, it's winter time. I can just go ahead and let it grow and wear my favorite clothing of article, my favorite beanie, of course. (sighs) Oh yeah, it's been a while, but some things don't change, like sniffing into the mic. Ah, smells like we're back. Um, But no, um, what was I saying about the hair? Oh yeah, um, COVID started about uh, springtime, just as it was starting to get a little bit shaggy, and all the barbershops were closed. And so I thought to myself, well, this is the look we're going to have for a while. And then it grew and grew and finally got past that weird, funky in-between stage. And before you know it, it's down my bark side. You know what? Uh, Let's throw up a picture. Yeah, yeah! That's what it looked like uh, right before she sliced it. She was nice enough to braid it for me and give me a picture before she cut it off. And currently it's on the way to Florida because I went with lots of love. L-O-C-K, lots of love, and uh, it's on its way there now. It said about three to five business days, and that was about three to four business days ago. And so by the time this airs, hopefully I'll have a reply. I think they said they would email me back, just like a thumb emoji or something, like, thanks for the hair. I would prefer it be like a... uh, Ah, sorry, I'll try to stop sniffing, but cut me some slack, Jack. It's been a while since we've been back, and so I'm trying to get back into the motion of things here. Um, but I kind of wish it was more like a kidney donor kind of thing, or like, a, you know, like a, can keep in touch with the person. Like, I want to know specifically where that hair is going. Um, but I realize that's not realistic. It's probably going to be, like, chopped up into different pieces maybe or maybe a little bit here a little bit there or goes to like different wids or whatever but it would be cool to like get like a pen pal relationship with whoever's got my hair It'd be funny to like run into them like on this st- <laughs> run into them like on the street and just be walking and be like my hair suddenly tingles like huh get like that phantom limb syndrome but with my hair what, what was that or just like follow up on them and like hey how's that hair doing Hey, you, uh, keeping up with the shampoo and condition, it lights to, it lights a little fresh air now and then, you're making sure you're walking, walking that hair, <laughs> just following up, making sure they're taking care of it. Hey, I don't appreciate how you're taking care of my hair, all right? I'm, I'll find a new owner if you're not gonna, <laughs> it's like an official adoption thing, you gotta give it to them for like a week and make sure that their home is okay and they can adequately handle this kind of hair. It's not the kind of hair that just, you know, grows up on its own. It's really got to nurture and love it. Respect the hair. But what's new with you guys? I got like a whole list here of stuff that I've been jotting down over the weeks and months. But it's one of those things where it's like I jot it down and then time passes and it's so long. It's like it's not even worth talking about. 
Godzilla and stuff like that. But we didn't talk about more hair stuff. Slice the hair. I don't know if I ever brought this up. Maybe on the last episode. Can't remember if it was on just a failed episode that never aired. But one of my favorite hair memories was uh, when I was getting roasted for my hair. I remember uh, I got my car towed because I lost my fob. Fob lost. Which is probably top three most annoying things that could ever happen to your car. Flat tire. I don't care about flat tire. I will jump out. Well, you know what? That's not true because I used to not care about flat tires. I used to I used to relish in the challenge of a flat tire. Put some relish on that dog. That's how much I love it. But whenever I had a flat, which was like twice, whenever I have a flat, I'd be like the dad in a Christmas store where I'd be like, time me, here we go. Be like the NASCAR pit crew, let's go. Swing open my trunk and have that professional. Yeah, right. But I wouldn't be out there with spinning that thing as fast as I could to try to beat my old time. I would just take it as a challenge to try to get it done as quickly as possible. It's not that hard. Jack it up. New one on. Jack it back down. Uh, Not that hard. Uh, But just challenging enough to make it like kind of interesting or fun if you try to do it fast. Can't do it anymore. I don't have any more spare tires. Is a spare tire even a thing that exists anymore? Uh, I've noticed in a lot of new models like the one I've got. No more spare, just like these run flat tires. That, hey, guess what? They run flat, quick as fuck. The last time I had a flat tire, I hit a pothole, and it just like deflated instantly. It was just like bam, and then just like boop, 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 boop. Didn't even have a second to like make it a half a mile or nothing. Just immediately flat. Didn't really run flat for that long. Couldn't do anything about it. Had to just like basically get towed. Uh, to the tire place to get a brand new tire, basically. Um, Yeah, spare tires are cool, man. I used to enjoy flipping out there and uh, slapping on the new spare. It was actually kind of challenging, but... um, Other top top three most annoying things that could happen to your car. That's right. Show me the number one answer. Bing! That's right, losing your key fob. Uh, yeah, losing the key fob is awesome because it's essentially impossible to find. Um, I think I only grabbed it because I needed, like, I was about to take my dog for a walk, needed something out of my car, so I was just like, now nah, just carry it in my pocket as I walk. And then, of course, uh, because you know I walk in the craziest, like, I jump, I skip, and I jump side to side. I'm kidding. I don't know how it happened. But I know that I got home and went to grab my key, and it was gone. And did I retract my steps like 30 times? Yes. Did I go through the park with basically like a rake and just like rake the grass everywhere? Was I on my hands and knees, army crawling through the grass looking for that stupid fob? Yes, dude. I looked everywhere and couldn't find it. So out there somewhere, somebody's just driving around trying to find my car probably just seeing what words, but... Had to get a new one. So, got to get it towed, of course, to the dealership. Getting it towed. I know this is taking a while, but we're coming around to the part. Here we go. So, I'm in the tow truck. And I'm getting towed. There's like two guys and me. The two tow truck dudes and then me. And these dudes were hilarious. These dudes were roasting me the whole way, dude. These dudes, it was basically, I didn't realize when I called AAA, they were like, hey, do you want the normal tow truck experience? Or do you want Jeff Ross's Roastmaster tow experience, dude? Because that's what I got. Jeff Ross rolled up and was like, what's up, you long-haired fuck? Get in the car. We're driving, and it's like we hit a bump, and then my car alarm goes off, and the guy's like, hey, would you mind uh, hitting that alarm? It's kind of annoying. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, I've got my fob. And he's like, yeah, I know, dude. Boom. Gotcha. You got toe roasted. And then, uh, you know, the as it often did, as it often does or did when I had long hair, longer hair, the conversation eventually comes up as like, how long have you had it? How long did it grow in it? Oh, it looks so long, blah, 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 blah. And we're talking, I'm like, yeah, you know, I've been growing it out. And the one dude's like, you ever like, have you gotten a cut like at all? Like you've just been growing it straight, like no trims or cuts, nothing like that. And I was like, no, 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 just growing it straight, 
just started growing it one day and just never stopped. And he's like, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Well, that definitely explains all your split ends and why it's all like uneven and stuff. And I just remember being like, whoa, ho, ho, dude, whoa. Really snuck in with that pa pa poo with the split ends. Your hair looks like shit. Pa pa. I'm just like, whoa, 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 ho. First of all, my hair is beautiful. And if you want anything else other than say that, then I don't want to hear it. Want to hear about my split ends or whatever, which I probably had a ton of. But I'm not like advanced in the world of hair to really like even realize I even had it. I, did. I had no idea until he called it out. And I'm just like, oh man, does my hair look like garbage this whole time? I had no idea. Told you a guy, but thanks. So that was fun. Uh, getting tar- blah, 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 getting car towed. Um, Good stuff. But yeah, the hair is short now. Cut it down. Threw up the picture already. Uh, that's like the most recent thing that comes to mind. Uh, other stuff. Because I got my whole list here. But if I'm being honest, a lot of it's old. Uh, we can talk about like uh, some recent movies I've seen. They were doing like a mega ultra Spider-Man release with like every Spider-Man ever. Uh, it used to be like Monday mystery movies. Now it's like Spider Man Mondays or whatever. I think they just finished it. But boy, was that great watching the OG Tobey Maguire's. And it's also cool to kind of like you can measure the popularity of each Spider Man because it's like OG number one Tobey Maguire Spider Man was like not only sold out, but they had to like add shows. That movie was so p- p- popping. And then you get over to, like, Andrew Garfield, and it's like, ooh, plenty of availability in this theater. And then you get over to Tom Holland, and it's like, ooh, sold out instantly. So it's like you really get a good measure on those Spider-Man popularities. But my goodness, Spider-Man number one, not only is that classic, but that holds up to this day, dude. And you know why that movie is so phenomenal? And why that coming home, uh, Tom Holland number three was so unbelievably popular. Willem Dafoe, dude. Willem Dafoe is so unbelievably good in that movie as Goblin, dude. It is insane. It's 99% of why that movie is so unbelievably good. Uh, It's because one, Sam Raimi is really in his prime time. And B... So is Willem Dafoe, dude. They are both just like hitting the stratosphere of awesome. Tommy Ma- Toby Maguire is fine, but it's really about Raimi's directing, which is through the roof awesome. And then Willem Dafoe just being uh, uh, unbelievable, dude. Uh, but yeah, Spider-Man was awesome. And then it was also a flashback because it's a real moment in time dude spider-man one is a moment dude because that movie if you like seeing it out of context is like a little bit like what like if you didn't know uh if you didn't know when that movie came out it, it does have this weird it's american as fuck dude they got that america turned up to 11 and if you're like if you don't know the content it's just like yeah damn this movie's patriotic for no reason there's a like the the final shot of the movie is just spider-man landing on in that awesome spider pose with the biggest american flag waving behind him it's just like america and so out of context it's just like god damn this thing's patriotic but watching it in theaters i had a such a flashback, dude. I was just like, oh my god, this movie is so reactive to 9-11, dude. It's crazy how like that was like such a answer to 9-11, dude. Spider-Man was there to get us through one of the hardest times in this country. And I thank Spider-Man every day for getting us through that hard time in America's history because I don't know if you remember, dude, does anybody other than me remember the original teaser for Spider-Man, the first Spider-Man, the original tease, dude, not the, oh, not the official trailer, I'm talking the teasy tease, and this was at a time when, like, there was no superheroes, dude, it was, it was 
I think Spider-Man kicked it off, and I think X-Men was, like, right after, or vice versa. They were very close, and those were, like, the OGs of my childhood, because it's, like, yeah, you got Keaton as Batman, but that was more 80s, cresting on 90s. And then I want to say that there wasn't a ton of very big, successful superhero movies that come to mind until Spider-Man really kicked it off. Um, and then X-Men, I'm pretty sure, followed up, which also kicked it off. Original Hugh Jackman. But I digress because original Spider-Man was such an answer to, to terrorism, dude. Because I remember the original teaser. The original teaser was just like... You're just following like a bank robbery. It's like, what's going on? They're robbing this bank or something. And then they're going up these like a million stairs and then they didn't do a helicopter to escape. They're flying off the building and like, what? We're stuck in like, oh, we can't move. And like the camera pans out and like they're stuck in a giant spider web, which is also, the spider web is between the two towers, dude. It was between the twin towers, which is so crazy. And I remember them having to erase that teaser trailer because obviously the towers, thanks a lot, Bin Laden. Uh, but then I have to feel like they add, like I feel like there's no way that there's at least two things in the Spider-Man that were, there's no way that they weren't added post 9-11. Is it the one is when Goblin is beating up Spidey and he's about to win and then like somebody throws like a bottle at him and they're like, oh, what are you doing? Hey, you mess with him. You mess up with New York. Which is like, I'm sure, I am sure the theaters exploded and then Take it a notch even further. He goes, you mess with one of us. You're messing with all of us. And it's such a like, uh, like specifically to New York. And then, you know, I feel like more so to America. But like you talked about a real rally cry for New York and America, too. And then that with the combination of just like landing with the biggest American flag, just being like, oh, America. Ain't gonna keep us down cause we got Spider-Man. Uh, but yeah, I just remember wa watching it back now is just like, <laughs> like if you don't, if you don't understand the 9-11 connection, then it's just like, huh, wow, they really went super patriotic there at the end for like no reason. But it's still fun. And then I saw uh, number two, which... In my mind, one and two were always just like, boom, dude, one and two. Watching it back after so long, it's like, it's more like number one, and then like two is maybe like halfway. It's not bad. It's mostly good because of Otto Octavius. But it's definitely not as good, and I feel like it's because Willem Dafoe, dude, is so <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, just uh, top villain of, like, all time. Not only is Goblin a great villain, but, like, Dafoe's, I mean, everybody always talks about the Joker, and, like, Goblin basically is, like, the Spider-Man version of the Joker, and Willem Dafoe is basically, that's like as close to the Joker as Defoe will get, and it is just unbelievable. Back to formula. <laughs> um, yeah. Very early, too. Uh, man, I, so many memories. I remember, like, that kiss winning, like, uh, MTV. That was such a big deal, dude. MTV's best kiss or whatever. And I remember... Always hearing about, like, Kristen Stewart being like, that was the worst experience. Of and Tobey Maguire, too. He's like, yeah, I'm upside down. I'm basically being waterboarded. I can't see. I can't hear anything. Uh, and, like, I'm supposed to kiss and be romantic. And, like, and she's like, yeah, I was drowning, too. He's, like, wheezing, like, trying to breathe out of the side of his mouth. But cinematically, it looks beautiful. And then also, top uh, Bruce Campbell cameo in the universe, dude. The Amazing Spider-Man. But Spider-Man was great. Um, it's great to get that nostalgia feeling for 9-11. No, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, that nostalgia feeling for Spider-Man was uh, great. Oh, my God. And then top Uncle Ben of all time, dude. Greatest Uncle Ben. 
I should have looked him up. I'm sure he's like a famous actor. I'm sure him playing Uncle Ben is not the biggest achievement of his career. But that actor, my God, that one moment where he's just like, Peter, I know I'm not your father. And he's like, then stop acting like it. The way that he just like, like verbally gets bitch slapped and just has like the tiniest little twinkle of a tear. And he's just like, oh, I'll pick you up at 11. Oh, Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben. But yeah, uh, that was cool. Uh, other uh, movie theater stuff. Uh, before we talk about, because there was like other movies too that have come out. Other movies that have come out that sure I'll talk about. But a uh, little thing on uh, theater etiquette. How do you guys feel about, how do you guys feel about feet on the seat? Like, I feel like I've given up on feet on the seat. It used to bother the hell out of me when people just like instantly just slap their, just kick their feet up right away, dude. Like not even wait, not even wait for the movie to start to see if anybody just happens to sit there, you know, like just no nope. second I sit down, feet are up. Used to bother me because it's like, hey man, you can't just it's like an hour and a half, hour 40, two hours max. You gotta have your feet up, huh? You gotta, which is like, uh, your dirty feet up on the chair. And then also, uh, to like everybody around you. Like, am I the only one that's like annoyed? Like when you're sitting there and like someone's foot is like, even if it's not the one next to you, like when they put their foot through the crease and it's like four down. So now I have like a foot in my peripheral, you know, like, am I the only, is it just me that finds that like really inconsiderate to be like, it makes me want to go behind them and then slap my foot next to their face and be like, oh, sorry, is it bothering you? My bad. I thought just resting my stanky feet up in the air in your peripheral, totally cool, right? I don't know, it's probably just me. I think it's just me that gets annoyed with that, but I don't know, the foot thing... I mean, it's just like, ugh, dude, like your feet are dirty and now you're just kicking them up on the seat. So now the seat's dirty. And then also like if you're putting it through the crease, like, ah, dude, no like consideration for other people. Like I'm trying to focus on a movie and I've got like this foot and then you're constantly changing position or like rubbing your feet next to each other. So I've got like this movement in my peripheral, dude. I can't focus your stanky foot next to me. It just... Comes off as kind of like rude, borderline trashy, like can't keep your feet on the floor for two hours now that we're out in public with shared seats that we all have to use, right? And you're just dirtying them up. Going on a real rant here, like, uh, geez, talk about being like a 70-year-old man. And then like talking, right? Everybody, everybody should be on the same page with talking. I feel like I was going to say more about the talking thing, but I can't remember what I wrote about it. Maybe it was because I think it's related to when I saw they did a re-release of Inception, which was also very cool to see because um, I remember seeing it in theaters. And it's kind of rare that I have a that I have a specific like memories of like walking out of a theater and just being like what the hell was that dude like that was inception inception i had to like really zone in and like focus on what the hell's going on because that movie is very existent it, that movie is layered in dreams uh layer, it, it, if you're not paying attention that movie just leaves you in the dust dude but they re-released it. Huge Nolan fan, uh, DiCaprio. It's also visually stunning. Great movie to watch. Uh, so re-released. Yeah, I'm going to see that. And when I tell you... <laughs> uh, when I Well, first of all, i got to tell you one story before I can tell you this story. So way back when... Does anybody remember Ghost Rider, dude? Speaking of, like, original... <laughs> Speaking of the OG superhero movies, dude, Nick Cage as Ghost Rider. Man, back when they were just like really trying uh, whatever they thought would work. And I think I rewatched it recently just because I love Nicolas Cage and Ghost Rider is an awesome character. But boy, that movie just doesn't work. But anyway, 
there's a line in that movie where there's a line in that movie where he's I think Sam Elliott says to Nicolas Cage, like, hey, you doing all right? Or, hey, how you doing? Or, hey, you all right over there? To which Nicolas Cage replies, no, no, I'm good. I, it feels like my scroll's on fire, but I'm good. Get it? Are you laughing hysterically? No? Well, if you're not, you're having the right reaction because is that a really funny joke? No. I would say... At maximum, at the ultimate maximum reaction you should have to that joke, here, let's do it. It's okay, I feel like my scroll's on fire, but I'm all right. <laughs> that should be about it. <laughs> that should be a only a nasal exhale kind of a laugh. <laughs> and that's at the top, dude. But I have never forgotten and never will I forget that I remember being in theaters and this is also in a time, early 2000s, where it's like, you would see a trailer for a movie a thousand times, dude. They would play it on TV all the time. They would play it all the time. So I even remember being like a kid and already having seen that commercial 10 million times. And every commercial ends with, I feel like my school's on fire, but it's okay, I'm fine. That was like the big tag joke at the end of the trailer. And so by the time I saw it in theater, dude, uh, that joke was dead, dead, D-E-A-D, -E dead. But I'll never forget that. We were like, we saw the trailer and then that line hits and there was a dude behind us that had never seen the trailer, had never understood the concept of humor before because when that line hit, he lost it. In a way that he was like, even repeating it too, he was like, Skull's on fire! Bah! You get it? Because it's Ghost Rider! <laughs> Losing his mind. And I remember sitting there shocked as a child being like, first of all, how is this the first time you've heard that? And second of all, how is that that funny to you? Like, that's crazy. And the reason I tell you that story is because I met that guy again, dude. He found me 15 or 18 years later, and we saw Inception again together. And guess what? It was his first time seeing Inception. Because when I tell you that at any twist, turn, moment, anything that happened in Inception, this dude was losing it, bro. When I tell you, okay, well, first of all, spoilers incoming for Inception if you're like that guy and had never seen it because I'm going to look it up right now. Let me guess. 2016? I'm going to guess 2016. Inception. Oh, my God. I'm so far off. 2010, dude. 2010, we're going on 14 years, 14 years since the release of Inception, and this guy had never heard of it, this guy had no idea who was in it, this guy had no idea about anything because not only was he reacting to all the twists and turns of the movie, but he was reacting to just the actors in the movie, dude. I mean, it's a classic Nolan, right? So it's got all your heavy hitters, DiCaprio. Michael Caine, uh, Killian Murphy, uh, Tom Hardy. Uh, dude, it's got all the classic Nolan characters, right? That French lady uh, who only appears in his movies. Uh, she was, uh, it's crazy, I can remember her as Talia Al Ghul in The Dark Knight Rises, but I don't know her real name, which is funny. Um, but it's like got all the classic cast. Dude. Anytime somebody pops up, Michael Caine finally turns around, and, the dude, and he was, like, right behind me, too. So Michael Caine pops up, and, oh, Michael Caine's in this? And then later in the movie, Tom Hardy, like, makes his appearance. Oh, Tom Hardy, too? What? Dude, I'm about to be exaggerated. Literally exactly like that. Anytime they had that moment where it's like, well, Leonardo DiCaprio, I know you're dreaming, but you're actually in a dream within a dream, every time behind me, just, what? Anytime they're like, but I'm not actually dreaming. He is, no way. 
Dude, like on that level of just like exclaiming out loud, which on the one hand, I'm like, dude, shit. Like, like I thought I was, <laughs> it was so over the top that I thought he was being sarcastic. I thought he was like overreacting as a joke. But then as it went on, I'm like, oh, he's not joking, dude. He's literally reacting to all of this. So on the on the one hand, I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up. But on the I'm like split because on the other hand, I do enjoy the fact that like a movie can have that kind of reaction. That a movie can make somebody in their seat go what? Like that's really cool to me to be able to do that. But at the same exact time, I also saw Inception for the first time, dude. I saw it. 15 years ago when I was like even younger and you know what I didn't do it in the theaters is scream out loud Whoa, I, I did that. I could do that in my head in my head I can go whoa and not have to disturb the whole theater. You know what I mean? So it's like on the one hand Shut the fuck up But on the other hand, it's like that's cool that you're having that. You know what? Honestly, the, honestly, I was probably upset because I was jealous. I was jealous that this guy gets to experience Inception for the first time like that, 15 years later. It was every single time, dude. This is a dream within a dream within another dream. No way! Another dream! Dude, every single time, I'm just like, get the hell out of here. But it was really cool seeing Inception again. It was great. Uh, it was really fun. Um, yeah. Uh, and then I guess can talk about some of the newer stuff we've seen. Because there has been a few, but I'd have to go through my purchases here Ugh. is anybody <sighs> quiet place is coming out soon guess who's not excited for the quiet place dude me but before we get to the quiet place what else did i see it's been a lot star wars they re-released that one Oh, yeah, Speed on the Dark Knight. I saw that one, too. Tarot. Oh, dude, let's talk a little about Tarot. Tarot cards. It's like a horror movie. Like a horror movie about, uh, you know, fortune reading or whatever. It was bad. Well, you know what? I don't know. It, it wasn't as bad. It was interesting. It was okay. Actually, no, it wasn't. It wasn't that interesting. It wasn't that okay. It was eh, eh. At best, eh. But the best part, the best part, dude, is like they keep they keep tying in all the uh, like tarot readings to like the way people died. And so there's a part, the best line in the movie, dude, the best. They find out like their friend died or whatever, and the shit is like, don't you get it, you guys? Don't you understand? He was a Capricorn, an earth sign. They found his body in the dirt. Dude, I literally exploded in the theater, dude. I was laughing so hard. I was like that guy in Inception, dude. Uh, when she's like, they found him in the dirt. He's an earth sign. Don't you get it? I was like, oh, where else are they going to find his body, dude? Of course it's on the earth, you moron. You're really grasping at these uh, connections to make everything work. Uh, yeah, classic Capricorn, gotta die in the dirt. Oh, so Capricorn. <laughs> the movie was terrible, but it was honestly worth it for that insane line. Uh, Planet of the Apes. Did I have anything funny to say about Planet of the Apes? Apes together strong. It was fine. I remember being okay, uh... Start of like a new trilogy or whatever. Uh, it was kind of a slow burner. It was fine. I don't really have anything good or bad to say about it. Saw the TV glow. Oh boy. I don't even... 
Bad to black. Mm. Furiosa. Furiosa. I don't know what to say about Furiosa because I think I might be in the minority here. I think I might be one of the few who loved it. Uh, one of the few who really enjoyed it. One of the few who loved Chris Hemsworth being the, the bad guy. I don't know. It's getting like mixed reviews because I, I, I think financially it's doing bad because unfortunately it came out like on Memorial Day and like I don't think that's good go see a movie weekend so like the opening weekend it kind of flopped not critically just didn't make any money which is a bummer because I enjoyed it a lot like it wasn't like I think I still liked the first one better Fury Road was a little bit better I feel like if they would have shortened it just a tiny bit it probably would have been a lot better but I still liked Furiosa a lot but uh I think a lot of reviews just being like, eh. A lot of reviews like not dating Chris Hemsworth, which is like weird because I thought it was great. I thought it was fun all the way. Uh, they did a re-release of The Crow. Did I have anything funny to say about The Crow other than it being great? Um, you know, it's really good. Uh, got the new one coming out that I'm not looking forward to. Stars Guard. Stars Guard. Uh, not looking forward to it. It looks very different. Tough to capture, like, the magic of the first one. Um, I mean, Brandon Lee was very good. It's very interesting to look back on it and see how the scenes that they probably had to do with just the double. It's interesting to think about the scenes that they had to change because they only had the double. Um, stuff I never really noticed before. It was good, though. You want to hear something that was not good? Uh, I'm going to tear this movie apart. In a violent nature, dude. In a boring nature, in a crazy, not entertaining nature, in a violent nature where, what? It's like a POV from the murderer? What? It's like if we got to follow Jason around on Friday the 13th instead of the campers. What? Doesn't that sound fun to watch a guy walk for like an hour and a half? What? Love it. Like, at first, it starts out, and it's like, okay, this is, like, interesting. Okay, this is, like, a artistic way to do this. Like, okay. At first. For the first, like, two minutes, it's like, okay. But then, like, I'm not even joking. Like, not even trying to exaggerate. It's like, the movie is, like, an hour and a half. And at least an hour. At least an hour of that movie is just watching this Jason Voorhees dude walk. Literally like you're playing the most boring GTA game ever. Just the back of some dude's head as he's walking through the forest. Just walking, not even walking at a quick pace, just strolling casually. And then we'll break it up every once in a while with a nice long wide shot of him just Walk in super slow across the screen. So boring. So boring, dude. Like, at first it's like, okay, this is kind of interesting, but it's literally just a dude walking through the forest. And then let's kick up the scariness, right? Oh, Found like this old timey firefighter suit. Let me put this helmet on. Literally looks like a Minion, dude. He looks exactly, exactly like a minion. Stupid round head with big goggles, dude. And so I'm just like, oh, even more stupid, dude. So now we just get to this sweet third person view of a minion just walking. Staring at the back of a minion's head, just walking. And then, oh my God, dude. Talk about the, and then the murders are, the murders are insane. Dude. There's like one that's like not bad. I won't give it away, but... It's not bad, but then also it's like so next level. It's like, dude, is this a Mortal Kombat game? Am, am I playing Mortal Kombat because it's like such an insane fatality? It's like, geez, brutality. And then later there's a guy who just like, he like punches his back or something. So he's like paralyzed. And then he drags him to the slowest lamest like wood chopping machine ever. It's like you put the wood on there and it's like, bring 
It's so slow, so anticlimactic, so lame. And then he just like lays his arm over it and just like cuts his arm off. The guy is paralyzed, so he's not screaming or probably feeling pain. I can't tell because he's just sitting there. Chop. Doesn't move, doesn't react, so it's not scary. Who cares? And then I'm like, oh, he'll probably lay him in the middle, and he'll probably do like a cool split down the middle thing. Nah, just pulls him a little bit more, so it cuts his head off. In the low, lamest, slowest, non-reactionary way ever, dude. Everything about that movie, it was bad. It was like an interesting idea. Like, I, I can tell what the pitch was. The pitch was like, yeah. We've got all these Friday the 13th movies, but have you ever thought what it would be like to follow Jason? To tell Jason's side of the story for once. Hmm? How interesting would that be? Not interesting at all, turns out. Uh, and then, like, there's another kill. She just gets dragged underwater. So you're just watching the top of a lake for, like, a minute. And then she... Floats and she's dead. And it's like, okay, cool. Uh, all right, great. More. Another minute of just sitting here. Boring. Uh, interesting concept. Really bad execution is what I would say. Interesting concept. Really bad execution. And then, if you want to talk about what's upcoming, a quiet place. Day one. Shh. Shh. Oh, I made a noise. I am so, am I the only one that's like, ah, dude, I so don't care. I so don't want to see it. I am so annoyed at the idea that this movie exists. It's probably not fair. It's not fair at all, actually, because I haven't seen one. I haven't seen two. Guess what? I don't want to see one. I don't want to see two. I've seen the first five minutes of one, and I was like, I get it. Hey, guess what? I get it. Uh, yeah, there's monsters. You make a noise, they get you. The whole movie. Shh, 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 shh. Ah, that's the whole movie, dude. Like, uh, it's so. Ugh. And then it's like I get it, dude. Like, oh, 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 the stupid kid. The stupid kid grabbed a toy and that should be the end of the movie. Uh, congratulations, you got rid of your annoying kid who was trying to murder the family with his stupidity. This kid who's raised in this world of aliens who hate noise and he's just like, meh, fire truck, dude. You should be happy, dude. You should be so happy that that kid is gone and didn't grow up to be a terrible human being who would have put your lives at risk a thousand times more. I'm <laughs> being so hard on this kid. Uh, but yeah, in my as soon as that kid died, I was like, great, that should be the end of the movie. Happily ever after, no more annoying kid, and we all survived because that kid's not there to try to kill us. And so they made number two, and it's like, oh, great, more shh, shh, shh. Oh, guess what? I'm going to have a... Oh, boy, it's hard to push this baby out and be quiet. Shh, shh. Right? And then I feel like the... Again, coming from someone who's never seen it, a big selling point of the movie is that you don't really see the monsters, right? They're always like, just like a blur and then they grab somebody or they're just like a shadow in the background. Like you don't really get a good look at them. Like I feel like that's a big part of what sells it, right? Is not being able to see exactly what it is. And in the new one, they're just like, hello, my baby, hello, my darling. Here to take over the earth. Look at me here, look at me there. Like, and then like, also they don't look that crazy. It looks like a weird knockoff version of the Stranger Thing flower face or whatever. Like, so, and then it's like, great, dude, great. Another movie about, well, how did they figure it out? How did they get the origin of the shh? <laughs> ah! Two hours of that, dude, no thanks. And then, I mean, like, the only tiny little reason that maybe I'd want to see it is because of the dude, the guy whose name I don't know yet because he's not that famous yet. He's only been in Stranger Things. The only reason I want to see this is just to see him act more because he's supposed to be the new thing. And I don't mean, like, the new thing. I mean, like, the new thing. Literally, the thing from Fantastic Four, the big rock guy, the thing. 
that's going to be him, the thing. So I wanted to see him act more so I can see what it's going to be like when he's the thing. What a jerk. <laughs> what jerk named the thing the thing? I'm Mr. Fantastic. I'm the Human Torch. I'm the Invisible Woman. I'm the thing. <laughs> Could have been something cooler. I'm a rock and roller. But yeah, I got quiet place to look forward to. Look forward to the shh. 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 Don't make a noise. Shh. The origin of the shh. Uh, lame. Uh, I don't think it's going to be good. Again, coming from someone who hasn't seen the other ones, right? <sighs> Which means I guess I have to now. Which means... And I'm, I'm so... There's no way I can't go into it with just an attitude of... You know, but what are you going to do? Uh, other stuff I saw in theaters, I got to do something I was always very curious about, which was see a UFC event in theaters. Um, it's actually been forever since I've seen any UFC event. The last UFC pay-per-view that I saw, like actually sat and watched live, was not the last McGregor. It wasn't McGregor whoever he snapped his lead with. It was McGregor and Cowboy. Uh, Cowboy Cerrone? Cowboy Cerrone? Cowboy versus McGregor, and he annihilated him with like his shoulder punches. <laughs> he shoulder punched that face into oblivion. That was the last one I saw. I wouldn't say I'm a big UFC fan. I don't know why, because I, I used to like boxing a lot, and I kind of fell off, but... Oh, I know why I don't like UFC. I'll tell you right now. Because this UFC is gnarly, dude. UFC is hardcore, dude. I got to see a dude's arm get, like, dislocated on the big screen, baby. Like, it was gnarly. Like, he just popped that thing out. It was crazy. But it was very interesting. It was very entertaining. I will say that. And then I think it was honestly cheaper than if I had bought the pay-per-view. How much is... Pay-per-view, uh, like 60 bucks, 50 bucks, 60 in there. I think it was like 25, and you didn't see it on the big screen with noise, and uh, it's kind of fun, you know? It was like UFC fans in there, yeah, ah, tap them, ah, you know, that whole thing was going on, so that was cool. It was fine. It was interesting. And then I was like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll check out that next uh, Conor McGregor fight canceled. Uh, just as I was getting hyped, I was like, all right, McGregor's bad canceled. Um, and I just see he got an injury or something, so that ain't happening. Um, and I, like I said, I'm kind of out of the loop. I don't know any of these uh, players or fighters. Uh, Dustin Poirier was the last one, and I was rooting for him. I feel like he was kind of underdog. Um, but it was a good fight. Lost to, uh, I think it's Khabib's brother. Um, Mega Khabib, God, such a hardcore name. Um, I think it was his brother, though, because he was like in the ring with him. But it was cool. It was interesting. And then uh, now that we're nearing the end here, I can play this video. Because uh, this was from that fight. I mean, it wasn't at the theater where I watched it, but it was at the actual arena. And so we'll throw the video up and we'll do a little b -b -b breakdown here. Let's check this out. Crank up the volume. Been a while since I've done anything like this. The pod in general. Can I do the space? No. Nope. Play. So they're at the UFC event. And as, <laughs> yeah, let's pause right there. Slot, I mean, like, this is a good tactic uh, to make yourself look uh, crazy and just slap yourself. Slot, come on. Ah. Insane. But at the same time, dude's rocking a pretty hardcore man bun. And as somebody who used to rock one all the time, I can say it's tough. Tough to be tough. With a man bun. Also, uh, let's check out where they're at because they are at the actual event, UFC. And... <laughs> and...
and they're basically as high up as you can possibly go, dude. I can barely see the arena, uh, which is interesting to say. I don't know how fun that would be to go to a UFC event and be so high up that you can't even see the ring. Like, I'm sure they have the... I'm sure they have the TVs projecting or whatever, but it's like, I think if you're going to watch a fight, you'd want to be close enough to see the fight. Being way up in the nosebleeds like this is insane. Um, but also, I mean, you only ever find this type of person in the nosebleeds, right? Uh, you don't really get a classy fan experience up at the nosebleeds. So he wants that slap, and let's see if he gets it. Oh, well, he initiated contact first. Still, and it's a tricky spot because Man Bun also has the high ground, which is a huge advantage in any fight, dude. Anytime you got the high ground, it's like you're kind of almost guaranteed a win because it's like you just got to fight down, dude. You're just... And then you have like a little bit of momentum going. It's easier to fight down than it is to punch up. You know what I mean? Man Bun's got the advantage. Ooh! Big over the top right, and he almost falls. Okay, first of all, this is an insanely dangerous place to fight. Not only is it an insanely... Not only is it crazy to like get into a fight here, but also to actually fight here. Like it's like they're fighting on the edge of a cliff, dude. Up in the nosebleeds where the seats are like basically like vertical to each other. And you just because he like all his momentum threw him off balance. He almost like went tumbling down. Sweet overhand right though. But I still feel like man bun is go Oh and I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to be like, well, Man Bun still has the, uh, still has the advantage, but, oh, and down he goes. Dude, like a rock tumbling down a cliff. Oh, and then it's just over after that. But man, look at the background, dude. Look how high up they are. You can't see anything. What is the point of even going? Oh, man, but that's crazy. He, like, rolled... This is like so close to this guy. It's like when you watch people like almost fall down the Grand Canyon. This dude almost fell from, look how high they are, dude. Still going, oh, he's just getting annihilated. Man bun is done. Oh, you got him. Look at how high up they are, dude. This is insane. They're literally fighting on the edge of a cliff, dude. Holy shit. No, but what a twist of, uh, you know, talk about blowing it, dude. Not only were you, like, physically, it looked like it was pretty big. Also, uh, way higher on the insano meter with the slap me, slap me. And then just to go t -t -t tumbling on down, dude, the cliffside. I think the more mind-blowing part of this is that somebody would actually go to this. Dude, how much were those tickets is what I want to know. How much did you have to pay to go? Man, they are hot. The more I looked at this, it's just like, God damn, dude, you guys are in the stratosphere. Sheesh. Should have gone to the movie theater, dude. <laughs> you could have got a way better view. Uh, less dangerous to fight on the movie theater uh, rows than it is here. Man, it is just like vertical step. Dude, the way that he just like t -t -t tumbled too. Let me take it back to see that tumble one more time. Right after the hook. Oh, he's still throwing everything in that right. Oh, and he just fucking went tum tum tumbling on down, roly poly style. Oh, and he just starts annihilating. His friends also aren't doing the best at helping him. If those are the man bun friends, not being very helpful. Probably because it's insanely dangerous climbing up. Dude. The, they are so high, it's crazy. <laughs> I think this was in Vegas. Um, so it had to be like at the T-Mobile Arena or whatever that is. Man, I had no idea that thing was so high up like that. Sheesh. But. 
Yeah, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. Uh, maybe don't go around the pitching fights. Man Bun had everything, dude. Man Bun had size. Man Bun had advantage. Man Bun had reach and height and everything and just blew it. Did the whole roly-poly and just lost bad. Oh, boy. Uh, UFC. But it was fun going to see it in theater. I might do it again. Uh, maybe we'll see what the next cards are. But I think if we chit chit checky check the time, I think we're just about done wrapping it up. And if you've made it here to the very end, well, guess what? You're my favorite kind of fan because you stick with us all the way to the end, and we definitely appreciate it. And thank you for tuning in at all. Thank you for sticking with us. I know it's been a minute, and we're trying to get back into things. Uh, we'll see how this goes with the editing process, but hopefully we get back on track, get things pumping out again, get a rhythm going here. But thank you again for tuning in. If you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe. It's much appreciated. And we'll see you next time on The Pod.